Okay, it is 9 a.m. on the dot. Uh, this is Ron, as you all know, and uh, everybody knows it's my 70th birthday, so I won't uh, comment on that anymore. Anyway, what I wanted to do is I wanted to uh, uh, do a morning session and uh, show you uh, what I look at early in the morning. And normally I start doing this about 20 till 9, let the market settle down a little bit, and then... Uh, uh, do my analysis, my intraday analysis. But uh, I need to, uh, in case I talk about any stocks today, I need to put my standard risk disclaimer up here and just uh, point out that any stock index or ETF mentioned in this presentation is not a recommendation to buy or sell. All trading, trading strategies are used at your own risk, and we know there's a great deal of risk in the markets. A lot of risk and a chance for a lot of reward, too. Now, I have not updated. Uh, well, I've done my uh, overnight update, but I have not done any intraday updating yet. So I just wanted to start here. We all know that the market is the dominant uh, determinant of uh, whether the, most of the stocks go up or down. Uh, uh, there are many different statistics, but some... Uh, we always figured 50 to 60 percent of the stock's movement was due to the market. So let's just take a look here at uh, how this market ended yesterday. And these are all my own views using the software. Yes, I'm showing off the software, but I'm, I'm uh, showing you my views and how I put them together and what I look for. Uh, let me bring up my drawing tools in case I need them. Here they come, I think. Somewhere. There they are. Just put them over to the side here. Now I want to, I'm gonna get a arrow here. I want you to look down. Whoops, I need a red red arrow, not a yellow one. For example, look down this column right here. This is the days since the three-day moving average across the six-day moving average. And these are exponential moving averages. This is something uh, that I came up with a while ago where I'm primarily using two indicators, the three crossing the six and the volume point of control, uh, either up, positive, or negative. And this tells me how old this, the signals are. And you can see looking over here at the market, starting with the semiconductors and then the Qs, NASDAQ 100 and so on, that these are all positive now, and zero was the crossover day. So that tells us the market is moving up when all of these are in this column. It's just a quick way to read it, and you can see how old some of these are. The transportation uh, index, and I need to get back to this, uh, crossed over 27 days ago. So this, this has been going on for quite some time now, and the this is a Bitcoin trust that crossed over seven days ago. Uh, the Nasdaq Composite turned positive here ten days ago, so this market has been moving, and uh, you all know that if you've been watching it. And it's it finally broke above uh, a resistance yesterday on the Nasdaq Composite. So now we'll see where we go from here. But it looks like more and more people are now piling in to this market. But this is the way it stood yesterday. It shows the percentage price change one day, beginning of the week, five days, beginning of the year, the SOX is up 47%. And the Qs are up 40%. Huge move. And then the NASDAQ 100 is up 39.9%. Now, all of this information is calculated every night when you do your download. So, you know, it goes through the process. Some people think it's a little bit laborious going through that process, but if you have a decent speed computer, it's nothing. And all of this information plus the uh, VPA uh, information is being calculated at that time. Now, another thing I look at here is the EMA fan uptrend. And you can see going clear down here to Bitcoin that the fan is up on all of these indexes. By the fan, I'll just bring up the uh, Qs. 
you all know this if you've been around me for a while, is here's the fan. This is the uh, 200, the 100, the 50, the 18, and then the 3 above the 6. And when this 3 is above the 6, and you can see it in the histogram right here, you can see when there are pullbacks and other opportunities to get in on the pullbacks, uh, that there is a lot of strength. But when these are spread out like this, it means we're in a strong bull market. And uh, that's what's been going on. You can see the fan actually appeared back here where the 100 went above the 200. So that's when the fan turned positive. And that's essentially when this market uh, started getting a lot stronger. So as the indexes move up, the fan widens and it shows more strength. So I'm not going to go through these, uh, but I look at this every morning to start. I don't do any analysis at night. I'm too tired, so I don't even download at night. But I do it, well, I said I got up at 4.30 this morning. I just wake up early when I'm fresh. I look at this, and then I decide uh, what I may want to do today. But r right now, I, I've got to be bullish. And uh, I've been doing that uh, morning NASDAQ chart for months now. And... Uh, it's been it's been positive. I, my comments have generally been positive, but I'm always a little bit cautious because I don't want to uh, be too enthusiastic about something. I like to observe, but I generally give you my thoughts about uh, if there's a strength or not. And just by looking at the chart, let me bring this back up again. This information over here, this is the cues. It says the best fit. These are VPA trends up. The medium was down because it came down here and it takes a while for it to go back up. But the short term, whoops, I'm sorry, I was on the wrong day. I am clicked on this. Make sure you click on the correct day. Now all of these are up. I, I thought that was wrong with the medium being down. So you can look right here and get a feel for the trends. Okay, let's move on from the market. Now what I'm going to do so I'm going to close this, and we're going to see what the market looks like now. I, I'm going to do, I haven't updated anything yet. I wanted to show you what I look at before the market ever opens. So I'm doing an intraday update right now. It only takes about 30 seconds with Thinkorswim running in the background. Maybe a little longer than 30 seconds, but not much. Okay, it's finished. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my designer. And I have these market analysis user groups that I put together years ago. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to update this folder. I have the current data. And I want to look at all the sectors and the industries and everything. And just by using folder number four, I can rebuild the indexes in the group. Now this doesn't take that long either. And remember, I'm going through all of these indexes and rebuilding them in all of the industry groups too. But when this is finished, uh, we're going to get an instant snapshot of where the uh, market is right now. Okay, it's going through the industry groups right now. And after I do this market stuff, then we're going to start looking at uh, individual methods to scan for stocks. Okay, before I do this, I'm going to go ahead and do one more thing. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild the user smart groups because I'm going to use those for stock analysis. So I'm going to use the current data from right now. I'm not going to update every five minutes and so on, but you'll get the idea. I'll do an occasional manual update. So what it's doing, all of these user smart groups down here, they're being updated right now. The end of days were updated with the initial download or the overnight download, but there are several intraday user smart groups that I use. Okay, now let's go here and just go back into 
the warehouse. So I'll click on the warehouse. Let's bring this all the way up. Close this. So where are we right now? If I sort on raw combo, the combo is percentage price change one day. I can see that the, here's the last date, July 13th. When I rebuilt these, it rebuilds it to the last day using current data. So this is the way the market stands right now. Once again, the materials index, materials index is at the top. It was there all day yesterday. So there's more going into, more money going into materials and communications and then technology. So let's just do one more thing. I'll bring the quick pick back up. And I, right here on this, I put in number three, which shows us advancing versus declining issues. You can see the combo is sorted on advancers divided by decliners. These are the major indexes, 21 out of 22 are up. Uh, the sectors by, all the sectors are up 10 and 0. Technology, 405 to 43 energy. And here's the percentage advancing and declining. So you can see that, on, for example, on the tech index, 89.6% of the stocks within that index, or 405 stocks, are up and only 43 are down. So we immediately know how strong this market is intraday. Now I can go top down from here if I want to. Uh, let's, let me go back up here. I'm sorry, didn't mean to do that. Let's, let's do the materials index again. I'm going to change to the index group and I'll make this full screen. And these are the material, all of these are stocks that are in the materials group. Now, I'm going to go over here. I don't believe I have, okay, I don't have. Let me go down to another view here. I'm going to go down to my HCS index analysis. Let's look at the percentage price change here. And I'm going to go down to my number six view. I'm in materials and I went to number six and this is showing stocks that are up in this industry group today. Now remember when I rebuilt those groups a few minutes ago? I'm going to sort on the industry percentage price change here. And this tells me that I needed to change to this view which is number six. I don't want to confuse you. Let me show you exactly where I am. I'm in my HGS index analysis and now I'm currently in number six right here. It's price change up intraday stocks and groups. So what I did is I went into the materials sector, if you look up here at the top left, and then I'm sorted on number six. And this is, I'm currently sorted on the industry, let me get this out of the way, industry percentage price change because I want to see which industries which in, within the materials sector are up the most. And you can see in descending order what it is. And this pretty much looks like it did yesterday. This group was strong yesterday. Now, looking across here, if I were interested in these stocks, which I should be here and am, I can see that Alcoa is the number one stock, but this is sorted on industry groups. Instead of doing that, let's do the raw combo. And I can sort on the price change up and the intraday range. So this tells me that TGB, Tasco Mines, is the most dominant stock within this industry group or within this sector right now. It's up 3.44%, trading at 99.5% of its daily range, and its volume is running ahead. And then I go back over here, and I can see that it has an RS rank of 82. So it's got a pretty strong RS rank. Were there any VPA signals? No. These views I'm pretty much standardized on because uh, I found, and, and you already know this, that relative strength is such an important uh, component of any stock. The strong stocks, the money 
uh, has a tendency to continue to flow into them. So just out of curiosity, let's bring that chart up. See what it looks like. Well, you can see, let's, let's get a weekly chart in here too. First of all, this is a very cheap stock. I didn't realize it was that cheap. Let, let's find a different stock. How about Camco Corp? This is a, uh, it crossed over. Let's start do this correctly. Uh, yesterday, volume was low, the spread was narrow, and the close was actually down. But it turned positive two days ago with zero being the crossover day and the volume point of control turned positive three days ago. It's got a good RS rank, not a great one. It's not up in the 90s, but 85. And then Kirkpatrick, I like to use the Kirkpatrick rank too because uh, it's based upon 26 weekly closes. And if both of these are strong, it generally means the stock is strong and possibly more than likely going up. Up 2.96% today. Look at this. It's trading at the top of its range. Volume's running 100% above normal. Uh, there was a no demand signal yesterday, but the prior day was an effort to rise, which means that there was some profit taking probably. Okay, so looking at the chart, first of all, we have a series of higher highs and higher lows on the weekly chart. So the trend is up. Here is where that VPA what flag was two days ago. Yesterday, this is a no demand. There was one yesterday. There was no demand because it traded up, but they sold into it profit taking. But what do we have this morning? We have a stock on the move. Now, I'd be looking at this and, and looking to the left. I always try to look to the left because you want to see if there is resistance. And there is resistance to get through. So it... Uh, it may have some trouble breaking through there. But going back to this, you can see that there was an effort to rise here. It got up here and then it stalled, came down, bounced off the 50, and the histogram turned negative. And that is an opportunity to get in to the stock when it comes out of that, when the, with the three crossing the six, or it's relatively safe to buy down here because you can see there's support here back here a few days and we have a couple of white candles especially this one right here volume was light on that day but if you have light volume and a white candle like this that closes near it it's high using the wyckoff methodology that is a sign of no supply because if it's going up on very light volume it means it has to they're bidding it up to get into it so I ideally the best place to get into it would have been here or here on that morning now the risk increases as you get up here into the resistance area but well here you can see the resistance right here on the weekly chart anyway that's the way I look at these charts and uh, Ideally, you want to catch them as they're just going up. Let's let's uh, go in here and uh, here's one that crossed over yesterday. It's up two dollars today, trading at 100% of its daily range. This is in the precious metal and mining. Uh, the day before, volume was above average, spread was above average, closed in the middle. Let's take a look at it. I like to have both charts. Well, this stock is in a downtrend and it's a cheap stock. But you can see that it's starting to base now. You can see some accumulation coming in here. Not my idea of a, a, a stock I even want to own. And I forgot to point out that the relative strength is only 15. With relative strength that low, it's really tough to uh, uh, d take a trade. So l let me see if I can back out of here. Okay, I backed out. I'm going to go back up here to the top. So that's the way. Now, I do a lot of talking here. I can do this much faster when I'm not talking, and I can flip through a lot of charts. But uh, going back down in there one more time, uh, if you want to look at strong relative strength stocks only, you just click on the relative strength, go up to the top, and then this is the uh, end of day. 
let's see if I go back down here to the enter day. I'm sorted on relative strength. And then you can look for strong stocks that are moving up. So this one has an RS of nine. That's a dollar thirty-two stock. Darn it. Uh, here is uh, Technoglass. Okay, ninety-six, ninety-seven, and it's up seventy cents. But notice it's at twenty-nine point eight four percent of its daily range. That means it opened higher. They sold into it, and it's down now in the bottom part of its trading range. So what I would be looking for here early would be high relative strength. It's an expensive, more expensive stock, but it's up and it was at 100% of its trading range. It's in containers and packaging. Its volume is only 108,000 shares though on a 90 day. So that's suspect. But, you know, it, it's got uh, the relative strength and so on. Just for fun, let's bring it up here and see what it looks like. Well, you can see it was in a nice uptrend and it pulled back the three let me make this full screen pulled back the three went below the six right here on this effort to fall day and uh, it's been going down ever since but what do we have today we have a low volume test and in a stock that uh, well, the group rank is, is not very strong, but the uh, stock itself over here in this box, you can see I put the, whether it's a box stock or not, and the relative strength, 95 and 97. Two different methods of calculating relative strength. That's why I like to use them both. But this now is a stock that should be put into a watch list. And I'm not saying to buy it, but I'm saying the selling pressure is coming off of this stock now if this low volume test holds up throughout the trading day or if it starts going back up. You can see the fan is still in place and it will be until this gold line crosses down through the cyan. This is the 18 and this is the 50. So that would have to go down through there for the fan to be broken. Now let's take a look at the uh, weekly chart you can see how strong this stock has been. And it's uh, been a series of, uh, I'm going to say this is a pivot. Ah, this could be a pivot. Higher low pivots, that's what you're looking for, really. Flattened out here, but this pivot here is higher than this one. And it's just been on a great run, and it needs to take a breather. You can see its relative strength compared to the S&P 500 on a weekly chart. It was outperforming the S&P the whole time. If this yellow line's going up, the stock is uh, is going up. Whoops, I hit the whiteboard. I always do that by mistake. Okay, and now I need to get control of this again. Okay, I want to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here and let's just go down and look at some other stuff. I want to get into all securities out of the indexes. The fastest way to do that, you can either go up here and look for it, but I always hit my alternate and space bar because I want to get there quickly. Then I close that and then I make sure I reapply the filter by clicking up here. You see where the, uh, the mouse is. And now I sort on raw combo. And I go down to my groups. I go down under my number one folder. These are the scans I primarily use. And I'll click on scorecard 1A, assigned industry groups, enter day. And this shows me what's really in demand today. Just by using this one view. Now look at this. It's, this is a Chinese automaker, I believe. Let's uh, take a look at uh, dollar twenty-seven stock. I'm not not going to look at that stock. Here's Bimmy Medical. It's a biotech, I assume. No, no flow control. Okay. Well, let's look at this. Uh, Let's look at yesterday. This is the way it closed using the my Wyckoff type indicators. Above average, volume widespread, high close. 
This crossed over 15 days ago, and the volume point of control crossed over 29 days ago. Uh, it has an RS rank of 97, but notice there's no Kirkpatrick RS rank. That means it probably hasn't traded uh, long enough to generate that. So uh, here's the change, uh, $2.18. Let's see, where did I? Okay, 1 to H13. Let's look at this. It's another cheap stock, but I'm going to use it anyway because, okay, that's why there's no Kirkpatrick relative strength. Anyway, it's a cheap stock, but it meets all the criteria anyway, and it's it's building a base here. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't buy this this stock. Let's look at that. Let's just get rid of those moving averages. When you get rid of the moving averages by going up to the number one chart, then all that compression leaves leaves the chart, and you can really see what's happening. So here's a stock that was. A dollar fifteen, dollar twelve, back here, and some news is coming into it evidently. But look at this; it's almost a doubler in a month. Just because they're cheap uh, doesn't mean that uh, all of these uh, the criteria that I use uh, does not work. It does work. There's a few problems with it. It only trades one hundred and fifty-six thousand. That can be viewed as a problem or a, a benefit if it doesn't trade much in the way of uh, volume. Uh, if you want to get in, you're going to have to pay up. So just another way to look at it. Look at the weekly chart. It's, you know, a series of higher highs. I I would have to do some research on this stock. I'm sure that uh, there are no earnings for it, negative earnings on the last quarter. But it has to, it's in the wrong group too. Well, it could no, it's got to be in the wrong group. Here, let me do this. I run across these uh, every now and then, and I send George the updates, and I'll fix this one. So if you ever see anything that's on the wrong group, just email me, and I will fix it. These groups uh, were established a long time ago by uh, they had a third party doing it, and it's before I started doing it because uh, I got frustrated with uh, some of the assignments. Uh, there's still a few that turn up that are in the wrong groups, and I, I'll fix them in a hurry. Okay, so these are, this is just my base scorecard. And if you want to just limit the stocks you look at it, uh, just remember that I ch when every time you update, uh, these go back to my default. But if you want to look at $15 stocks only intraday, change that to 15 and then that eliminates everything uh, below $15. So now we can see there's a Centris Energy on top and the minimum price. These are the intraday last prices. You can see that they all went up in price. But I always just leave this on $1. And the reason I do that is a lot of people like to play with low price stocks. Okay. Now let's let's move on here. Wow. I've already talked a half hour and, and I haven't really gotten where I, I want to go. But we're going to change that. So. I want to go back to this chart, my number two chart here, and I want to do a different uh, stock here. Let's let's do that Centris Energy. Actually, let's do Meta. How about Meta? Anybody on Meta? And let me just change the size of this here. Well, it looks like. Uh, Good. Looks like a lot of uh, now. No, I, I I've been trading a lot of debit spreads lately, and this is one which would have been a perfect debit spread trade month month after month because it just continually goes up. And uh, we're, I'm going to do a session on debit spreads maybe next week or the week after, and uh, show you uh, how I do it. It's a low risk well low risk risk defined trade. That if you get on the right side of these, it's uh, you can uh, 
watch your money grow. Of course you can lose money on them. But anyway, I wanted to point out a meta here and just use this chart. Now, every one of these, when I designed my views, I had the chart in mind because these Wyckoff fields up here, well, here's meta down here. Let me move it up to the top or near the top. Do it this way. Okay, these fields, the Wyckoff fields, are right here also. The volume spread and the close. If I click right here, what it's doing today, it's reflecting what the current intraday bar is. And I haven't updated for 30 minutes, have I? But this is the way it was when I did my update. Now, if I go to the prior day, notice that it went from narrow down, volume low, spread narrow, and closed down to yesterday, which was about volume was high, spreads above average, closed very high, sentiments bullish. Let's do an F5 on this just to update the chart and see where we stand. You can update a single chart if you're doing manual updating. You don't have to update everything. It's almost faster just to update everything. But uh, that didn't change much, did it? This is the way it currently is right now. It's saying no demand. So we're getting a no demand signal today. Get this crosshair out of here. Uh, that's what this symbol is up here. But getting back to this, this information here on Meta right here corresponds to the way it was yesterday. So if I'm looking early in the morning, I can see that this was a situation. Meta crossed over 21 days ago on the VPOC. It crossed over eight days ago. So if you use a VPOC, which is another good way to do it, when there's a little pullback here, that's another opportunity to get into these stocks on volume point of control only. It didn't get down here, didn't even test the 18, but there was a little pullback and an opportunity to get in on a relatively low risk trade. So using this information, I can see how old the signals are. I can see the relative strength. I can see the price, the intraday price change, the range, and uh, the volume. Volume's heavier today, probably some profit taking finally. 25 million shares is the 90 day. Uh, demand supply, put this in for Robert. He uses that column, internet media communications. And uh, then let's go over here a little bit. And I can see that there was an effort to rise yesterday. So. I can look at this and know before the market opens that all of these warehouse fields correspond to my chart. So that's why I have this chart marked up like this. I also have the group in here. I can see what the group's doing, what the, what the sectors, and, and so on. And then if I want to look at 1C, which gives me the intraday data, but it also compares the stock to the relative strength of the S&P 500. If this is going up, it's outperforming the S&P. And this, if you look right here, the cyan is the industry group. So this is cyan. You can see the groups going up. And the green means that it's outperforming the group. Uh, Wesley, uh, demand supply, uh, uh, it just means there, Robert should explain it. He uses it more than I do. Uh, it just explain says that there's more demand. Robert, what are your parameters for demand supply? It's the advancers divided by the float over 50 days, I believe. What numbers do you like to look for, Robert? He likes greater than 2%. So what's the demand supply on this one right now? 1.1%. Let's just sort on this. and Let's go up to the top of this. Well, here's one. Oh, it's a biotech with a 289.2. That's pretty excessive, right? Uh, can't, can't see anything on that. 
I know you have to be careful with all of these indicators, but Roberts, these that are so extreme don't mean anything. I don't think. I'm kind of a VPA, VPOC guy. Robert likes, uh, likes to use the uh, uh, demand supply, and I guess he's going to have to do a webinar and instruct me on how to use it. But uh, anyway, let's move on here. So I have a whole series of charts uh, which are easy to get to and change, so you get a different perspective on uh, any of these stocks. Let me go back, click on Meta. You just type Meta in there. Look at Meta on a weekly chart. Unbelievable. And look at these great VPA flags down here. We can't screen for VPA on weekly charts, but we can certainly look for them and confirm. Okay, Robert says if he has a choice between two stocks, he'll go with the higher number on the uh, demand supply. But uh, this, this is what you're looking for, obviously. I mean, uh, high relative strength. And then on the high relative strength stocks, you're looking for a place to get into them. And that's where the pullbacks here on the, on the three crossing the six, that's what I use these for. They, these are things that I've come up with. Uh, these are my files. It's just, it works for me. And I, I can know immediately where I stand with a stock based upon the days since the crossover. And then looking at all this other information too. Anyway, let's move on from this. I've got a lot more I want to recover, or recover, cover. And uh, I'm probably going to have to do another one of these sessions. So let's, let's do this. Uh, let me get my bearings here. I'm going to uh, bring this up. I'm going to update the intraday now. You can see it doesn't take very long to do this. I talked about the material sector. You can do the same thing with the industry groups, but I don't think I'll go into the industry groups today. You get the idea. Okay, this is almost finished. And then I'm going to update those user smart groups again. See, when I have the charts and everything open, that takes a little longer to, uh, to update these also, but that's fine. Okay, now let's go back to that designer under tools. I'm going to rebuild the user smart groups with the current information that I just downloaded. Because I want to know what's happening now. And I'm going to go from the stock level. I've got quite a few user smart groups. I could probably eliminate uh, several of them, but it, uh, when I'm not recording, it really doesn't take long at all to update these. Okay, now let's go right here. I'm going to click on my quick pick, and I'm going to go... I'm going to go, I'm going to think I'm going to start with these instant watch lists. If you don't want to do a lot of prospecting, I put these in here and they may change, but uh, I put uh, lower risk setups. These at the end of the day, this is an undercut setting up after pullback where I'm looking for stocks that have pulled back. And let's see what comes up here on these 25. And let's sort on the intraday and see how they're doing. You can see that uh, now the earnings came out on this stock today. AEHR should have been watching it. But let's just go across here. This tw group of 25 is created with a filter. And I limited it to 25 so you don't have to spend a whole bunch of time looking at stocks. But let's go across here. Yesterday it was above average. Spread was below average mid 
because earnings are coming out. They're waiting on earnings. But here's the pullback right here. You can see this pullback five days ago, or the three went below the six. That's what I mean by pullback, and I'll bring that up. And uh, the VPOC crossed yesterday, so there must have been some buying. Relative strength, 97. Kirkpatrick is 94. Last close was 39.89. Uh, the percentage price change yesterday was 3%. Closed at 45% of its daily range. Now, on these views, I also included the intraday. You can also see there was a VPA signal yesterday, strength seen returning. So this is yesterday. This is today. Earnings must have come out pre-market. So let's bring this stock up. And here's the weekly chart. You can see that it had a big move up. It's been chopping around in a trading range. But here is the pullback. If you look, I'm going to bring that arrow up again. If you look here, you can see the three went below the six as it pulled back here. It was waiting for earnings. It remained below, three below the six. You can see the little histogram here. And today it's popping over. So this is strength seen returning right here. And then it's confirming that strength. Now, I would go in and make sure that the earnings have been released. But this is an example of a stock which is pulling back and setting up. So, let's look at a couple more. When I clear this, I have to get back. Minimize this. What's next? I don't know that one. $3.80 stock. Let's look at Kohu. Once again, above average uh, volume. Spread was narrow. Close the middle. You, you can see that it crossed down six days ago, but the VPOC turned positive yesterday. It's got an AS 83 RS rank. 63 on Kirkpatrick. Not that great. It's a semiconductor manufacturer. It doesn't trade much volume. Fan is up, though. And um, here's the intraday range. It's holding on. No VPA signal yesterday. So you can see how much information there is here. And this information all translates to this chart. So you can see the pullback here. Once again, bring that arrow up. Here's where it crossed down right here. And now it looks like it bounced off the 100. And then yesterday, the volume point of control turned positive on this positive today. And now it's uh, gaining some strength today. It's uh, 81 group rank, semiconductor manufacturer. And the group is going up. So if you decide to take a trade like this, if I decided to, I would try to get it right here. I'd be doing this right above this yesterday's close. And then I'd put a stop in uh, no, no further down than this and maybe even closer. Depends on how much risk I wanted on the trade. And I'm sure most of you know this, but the quick way to determine... Oh, I need to get, I keep forgetting I have to go back to this to regain control. And where is that? I must, I've got a double monitor here. Oh, it's over here. No wonder I can't find it. And a quick read on this would be from the low to here. Well, you know, if you take it, took it here, you're still risking about 6%, but, uh, the place I would prefer to buy it would be right here and that low just below there. And that's a 4.90% 4, 4 risk. Uh, not too bad, uh, especially since the group's going up and it's in a, uh, a, a, a pretty strong group. Let's get rid of these, get rid of this. And of course, you have to look at the weekly chart. Been, it's been choppy recently, but the trend is actually... I would say still up on the weekly. Okay, so 
this these are just for for uh, these these are setting up these have crossed over you can see the crossover a two-day window on the crossover i i always like to give it two days because some days you're going to miss it other days uh, you'll be there on the crossover day now here's shopify crossed over yesterday the vpoc crossed over two days ago 95 96 here's the the price uh, is up 4.4% yesterday. It's up another 5.61% today, trading on very heavy volume. Let's bring this up. So I'm just saying that if you don't want to spend a lot of time prospecting, there's some views that are set up for you here already. And you don't want to spend hours and hours prospecting. And, and uh, these can give you some pretty good trades. You've, of course, you're going to have losers, but if the market's strong and they've crossed over, pretty good chance they're going to follow through. Now, home builders have been really strong. Let's look at TriPoint here. Look at this weekly chart. And here's the impulse. Here's the reaction. A little more impulse than a reaction. It pulled back. It's set up. This would have come up in the uh, setup area right here until it crossed over yesterday. And it did cross over with heavy volume and an effort to rise. It's stalling out a little bit. Like I said, I always try to look to the left. And I made a mistake yesterday. I bought a stock. I didn't look to the left. And it started going down. I just dumped it uh, because I didn't pay attention to the resistance area. And... Uh, I think that's uh, a mistake. You always need to know what's going on to the left. These stocks go straight up and break past here, but uh, you just have to be aware of of where they sit. Okay, now I'm not going to spend any more time on these. Uh, uh, here's here's the same thing, bullish intraday. I re remember I just did an update. So this is end of day. These are intraday these are the ones that are going these are going to be up today these are setting up and they're up today and these crossed over yesterday or the day before and these are up today so here's the end of day list these are the intraday and then these are bullish vpa scans end of day fan up Look at the VPA signals over here. Mostly effort to rise. Here's the intraday prices here. And this one, this is a fan up. And this one also, uh, I'm probably going to, I don't know what I'll do on this one. This one also requires that the long trend in the chart, let me show you what I mean. This was yesterday. That this best fit long trend is up. So what I'm looking for are uh, stocks where this says up and, and the medium and short term can be down. But see, it's under accumulation here because the VPA flags are coming up. And it's, it's coming up in this screen because of these VPA signals all over. All of these have to have a VPA flag on these two. So if you don't want to spend a lot of time prospecting, use these three. You should find plenty of decent candidates just with them. Now, let me move on. How much time do I have? Not that much. I might have to do another one of these if you like doing these in the morning. Okay, now what, I, what I'm looking for... Stocks, I'm in my designer, I'm in my user smart groups, and I'm in group number three. If, if you have the Insider Club files, you're going to have these. Now I'm going to look at stocks and groups up intraday. These are $15 stocks, and I'm going to click through to here, and you can see that three of these stocks are in the uh, effort to, or in, in the uh, VPA flags. No, Tom, I can only do one a day, and this is my birthday. I'm not going to have two classes. This is my class for the day. 
Uh, anyway, where, where I go here with this, this is 100 stocks. So I'm just going to go into my number one, and I'm going to sort, go to number 1A, which is intraday, and I'll just uh, sort on the industry percentage price change. Remember when I first started this session is that the materials sector was, was the sector. And here we are. Look at the sector. Material in base metals. And these base metal Alcoa, I believe, was the top stock before. So I just ran this a, a few minutes ago. And this tells me exactly what's going on right now. And I can look and see how many of these are relative high relative strength stocks. If I only want to pay attention to them, I can sort on this or sort on Kirkpatrick one or the other, go to the top. You can see there's only 100 securities in here. And Marathon Digital Holdings is at the top, up 5.16. It's in, this is, a, I, I believe, a Bitcoin-related uh, uh, stock. But if I'm looking for a strong stock that's crossed over that's still moving, let's, let's look at this. Bring these to the front. Let's, so look at this. First of all, this is in other financial services. We really don't have a Bitcoin group, but it, it uh, goes in here. This group is strong. And, and look where this uh, stock uh, uh, took off. Look at the base here. And then always, if you're scanning or using my predefined uh, groups. Just uh, look for these effort to rise and also hear these. Uh, uh, I call these volume pocket pivots. They're not all volume pocket pivots. And uh, okay, Robert says the demand supply is 23.8% on this right now. And if you go up here, if you click on this, the fundamental screen, it says right here, demand supply. See that number? So it's here on the front. But look at the effort to rise with this volume coming in. The volume point of control is positive here. But three days of increased volume, which means demand's really coming in. This is only rows here because this it's based upon open to close. So this is a red bar because there was some selling into it right here. And then go a couple more days, what do we have? An effort to rise plus the big blue spike. And it just shows a tremendous demand for this stock. And like I said, it is a high relative strength stock. If you look over here, 94, 99, and it's, it's on the move. And uh, if you like to buy strength, there were several opportunities to buy this stock, and I don't know why I didn't because I was too busy making these views for you and I didn't have time to do my proper prospecting. But you can see how all these views all tie, or the views tie into these, this chart. It's, uh, it makes it uh, very handy. And I'll look at the weekly here. Higher highs all the way up. Might be too late to chase this. I don't know, but in a strong market, uh, uh, these stocks have a tendency to uh, uh, continue higher. Okay, so I want to uh, resort on raw combo, which is a demand or percentage price change intraday on this in this scorecard view, and you can see the demand here based upon the percentage price change, the range. The volume, this is running 367% above normal. Uh, the 90-day moving average volume is only 245. Here's the demand supply. Not that great yet, but uh, this is under medical devices. There was a VPA flag here. What was it? I have to scroll over. Effort to rise yesterday. The fan is up. All this information is in my views. Now, normally... I, I have a wider screen. I set my resolution so I see everything. But for the videos, I wanted to show you or get these fonts a little bit uh, 
bigger so you can see them easier. Okay, so let's look at this stock. Here's the blue line. Came down to the 50, bounced off of it. Accumulation coming in on this heavy volume. No VPA flag generated, but the volume point of control is right here. And that's, uh, if you're scanning on VPOX, it, it would have shown up then. But you can see that another high close here and then an effort to rise yesterday. And now it's broken past resistance. Looking at this, look back over here to the left. What do we have on the daily chart? I mean the weekly chart. It's broken past resistance. It may be, no, it's not an all-time high by a long way. <laughs> but you can see weekly is now up. These medical stocks, you, know, you can make a lot of money, you can lose a lot of money on them. All right, now let's just stay in this group right here. I'm going to go a little bit longer here. I just want to show you how you can go through my views. This is uh, signed industry groups. If I go to number two impulse reaction, these have had slight pullbacks from a recent high. You can see that it's pulled back a little bit from a recent high. It's up today, though. We know that because of this. Pull, but it pulled back from that recent high just the day before. This, this is an old, old scan, and I still look at it because what I'm looking for are stocks that are strong, that have just pulled back a little bit or hesitated and may be going up again. Now look at the group here, application software. So it's a chance to get in. Okay, that's... And then this is the... 10 period VPOC crossover today. See these zeros? They all crossed over yesterday. And these stocks, remember, I'm still in this group over here. The one that I built, these stocks are $15 and up. And we know every one of the stocks are up. So we can go in and apply these and we can look at the relative strength and so on. But the primary is the VPOC crossover. Days since the VPOC 1010 crossed over. So I know that these are fresh. Ian used to say fresh horses, I believe. Or they may be. They may fail, but you can see the VPOC crossed over yesterday on this. And this is a stock I talked about a while back that reported earnings today. You look to the left, though. You know, there's still resistance here. Short term, though, it's up. But let's move on. I want to try to get through these. These are a 3 and 6 crossover indicator, 2-day window. And the VPOC is also positive. 2-day window here is either 0 or 1. These are all up, of course. Uh, this 5 is crossover indicators along with the, the blue pocket pivots. So or either a blue pocket pivot or an effort to rise. Either or. Let's look at Star Surgical. Okay, you can see the blue pocket pivot here. Three days in a row. So, the fan, the fan doesn't come into play on this one. I'm just looking for a strong volume. Volume point of control. Look at these building. It just means that these up days either the, over the 5 or 10 days are higher than any down days on on down volume. And look at this. Really nice move up on here. Okay, let's keep going. I want you to play with these on your own to figure out what they do. Here's a continuation indicator. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Uh, this one doesn't have the effort to rise. This one is either or. Uh, either the blue bars or an effort to rise. And if you, uh, let me scroll over here. Get this out of the way. You can see that a lot of these had an effort to rise. I call this my continuation scan. Once again, we know we're in a group where the stocks are up. And these stocks are continuing to go up 
either with a VPA flag or the blue bars. And here it had both. Uh, this is that medical stock. Uh, okay, so you can see the blue bar here for good volume and also an effort to rise. I came up with this because uh, if you miss the trade, uh, there's still a good chance that you can get in on stocks. Now this one right here, I don't know anything about this stock, but it crossed over 9 days ago and 11 days ago on the VPOC. Wow, and it only has an RS rank of 14. That's a apparel and footwear. Let's look at it anyway. Because it's up another 9% today. Well, you can see why it has a low RS rank. But going back to the indicators, why did it show up as a continuation? Because of this blue bar right here. As the volume comes in, it tells me there's demand for this stock. This is a projected volume today, this magenta line. So there's demand for this stock. I probably wouldn't buy it. It's got a rounded bottom. You can see all the accumulation days in here. So uh, when all the fear has gone out of the market and uh, uh, the uh, deep pockets step in or people that are willing to buy and hold those, that's a good place to buy those. Okay, let's move on. Well, let's find one more. Let me find a name that I can... Uh, here's Shopify. Again. And you can see that yesterday, it I may have pointed this out, it, are, it had the blue bar and it had the effort to rise. So either or. And this clearly is an uptrend, in an uptrend. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Uh, no, well, there was one counter trend stock yesterday, Alphabet, and I, and I put on a uh, a debit, bull debit spread yesterday, and I'm up quite a bit on it today. Why did I put it on? This is probably a good lesson here, because it had pulled back, and I saw this low volume test right here. So I went in, it, it, the, it's trending up 200, 150, 18's up here. So according to the fan, it's trending up. It's a huge cap stock with great liquidity. We all know that. And I thought, you know, I'll risk, I only bought one debit spread on it, but I'll risk a little bit on it. And uh, it worked out for me. But this was a counter trend. That's how I found it. Now, Perfect Speculator, these are stocks that either hit a 52-week high or a, uh, a uh, three and a quarter year high. And uh, you can see these are all high relative strength stocks. Uh, let's look at this Riot platform. It's been going up. This is a, a stock that based and took off. You can see that it cleared everything to the left here. It's just been moving up. I think this might be a Bitcoin related stock. Is that correct? Uh, but anyway, uh, th these are stocks that are hitting new highs. And then here's 52 week high. There isn't much difference. But I use the uh, perfect speculator because it could be hitting a three and a quarter year high. Why three and a quarter years? Because that's all ECSI calculates back to, but that's plenty. Now here we can see which stocks are most active up. And uh, based upon my filter, every one of these stocks, 54 out of 100, are well above their daily volume. So I can see... Uh, where demand is, uh, these are, and I have these are up. There's nothing under down, of course, and here's high relative volume intraday. Look at all the green, and then market leaders. This is a market leading folder. If they're in my market leaders, and these are stocks that can be down no more than five percent from the 52-week high. So I consider these leaders, and out of this group, 11 of these are leaders. 
and you can look and see that most of these have high relative strength. And then, well, the, that's most of them, but I always look at the earnings due dates. Uh, this is, uh, you can see right here in this column, it tells when the earnings are due. And uh, I think that's all I want. Oh, no. Test for supply or strength senior training. I have these in here also. Down at the bottom. Fan up. No fan. So just a couple came up. Just a quick read on these. And you can see that. Uh, let me scroll over here to the right again. I got to get this out of the way. Still didn't get there. Oh, oh, yes, I did. Okay, so right here. Strength scene returning, high volume up bar. So that's, uh, that's all I have time to show you today. But I use these a lot just to run through. I'll, I'll bring this group up. Or if you want to trade stocks 1 to 15, just go down here. Look at, all the, look at these gains in the 1 to 15. Just run through my views or uh, any other views and there's a lot of other views you can apply to this like for example undercut and rally nothing showed up the three below the six on this in this group let's go back up to the one above it there were a couple and we've already seen them goog and aea chart but you can apply anything uh, i put these can slim uh, type um, stocks in here they're not true can slim i say can slim type but they do have the 2020 earnings and uh, thanks mike uh, so i know that these stocks have decent earnings let's just bring one up and look at the earnings growth on these now i didn't i don't call them can slim true can slim stocks because i don't require everything that they require i'm primarily interested in the quarterly earnings and if you click on this here you can go into the financials and you can see the revenue and earnings growth rate over five years just click on this one right here okay i've had enough i'm going to go look for stocks celebrate my birthday maybe i hope you enjoyed that any questions Okay, you like the early ones? Uh, actually, they're they're more useful. Uh, thanks, Linda. Thanks, Mike. Uh, because you can see what's happening early in the market. We may even start one. If I do another one, we may start 15 minutes earlier, too. Okay, uh, I'm going to... Th thanks, Jim. Tom. Thank you, everybody, and all have a good day, and... Uh, I will get this process, and I'll probably get it out yet today. It'll go in the uh, list of, uh, of uh, groups or movies, videos. Thanks a lot.